And you should know that Brent only learned he would be doing this uh, last Friday, as I understand it. So he stepped in at very last minute notice. And uh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> so what do you want to do, Emma? I'm going to sing Spleen by Debussy with poetry by Paul Verlain. Thank you, a very negative way to start the evening, <laughs> but never mind, too bad. This is actually the sixth song, they, they both know this, in a set of six called Forgotten Ariettes. And uh, the one before this is also in, has an English title called Green, where Emma and Brent would be as happy as, as uh, people could be in a kind of Carabino uh, adolescent love, right? And then you turn the page and you get to this one called Spleen, and uh, I don't know if any of you have uh, ever heard the expression, he looked at me with spleen in his eye. We don't use that very much anymore, but the whole idea of hostility and depression and <sighs> that, that horrible feeling is probably the reason why this has this title. Um, you, you do the ending very uh, desperately, uh -huh. seemed like both, both vocally and physically. Uh, and I'm wondering, does that, Makes sense to you that it is the lowest part of the song, and also Brent is in the lowest part of the piano there. Uh, to me, on when, he, when she says alas at the end of the thing, and of course alas is like a wild card. I mean, it can take whatever personality it needs. Uh, it seems to me you're doing it as if yesterday your love flew away and all of the beautiful things in the world turned ugly to you. And I would experiment with it as an old ache, an older ache, put oh. it that way, so that when you have a loss, a real contralto rep, you know, uh, register, and Brent has this, play this for the audience, would you? Brent has this thick, this kind of kind of sound, you know? <laughs> and that's not at all what we expect with DVC. We, we're used to ethereal and clarity and all that stuff. And I think if you do this, which is what I got, like, right. like, please take this cup from me kind of thing. Yeah. I wonder if you could try it with a kind of 
an old ache on your shoulders that I sang my high B flat and I, I know better. <laughs> and, you know. So, yeah. so that the, the speed of the music, the texture of the piano part, the, the tessitura of the voice part are all conspiring in the most wonderful way to be just, who cares? I can't, I can't get this off my yeah. back. It's very different than I was thinking. Yeah, well, like, that's a, just another way to do it, okay? Can we back up to the beginning? So I'm gonna ask Brent to tell me what composer do you know who could not have written the first phrase? <laughs> That's the first phrase. Could Schubert have written that? Sure. Right, absolutely. <laughs> Could Mozart have written that? Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so on and so forth. Wolf, mm -hmm. everybody could have written that. How will we know who wrote this song? It's no, I want to know in, in bar one who oh, wrote this one. song. Um, what have you got available to show us who wrote it? I mean, it's, it seems like if this is if this is Brent's kitchen, all of all of us who play impressionistic music, whether it's songs or or, or uh, chamber music, whatever, uh, here's the kitchen, and that's the kind of the seasoning down there, and that you know it's a pentatonic melody, so it's not uh, going to sound dissonant right. if you use some pedal. I think it'd be neat if these people knew right away who wrote this thing. Sure. Now it's a watercolor. How about this? This is everything. That's Emma. How bad is it? Now talk to him. two phrases about the sea and the sky. Yeah. Um, the intervals are a little too big coming down. Okay, okay, yeah. and, and when you breathe and start each of those phrases, can you think it a little higher than it's yes. actually written? Sure. Especially going from G natural to G sharp. If the G, if the G natural is low at all, it, it, this is it's not modern music, but it's, it's difficult to know exactly where are you in the melody, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, can we do, uh, if Brent plays the bars before Le Ciel? By itself. <laughs> okay, now you know where he is. He's giving you five beats. So when we begin this last section, do you a la fire dernier? Brent has a piano on U, on the on the downbeat there. It would really be neat if you both went to piano yeah. because from this little seed will grow all the way to the high yeah. B flat. And it seems to me you're already MF. Right there, yeah. yeah. So then you're going to give us a, a a trip from six to nine. How about going from three to ten in terms of dynamics? Okay. Uh, very good. Uh, Intonation now. Let's do Je crains toujours. Je crains. You know, take a breath so she knows you're going to start, okay? And. Je crains toujours ce qu'est 
what is it? different tomorrow, you think? So those, chords, those chords are like a, a gavel saying, forget about it, man, it's never going to change. <laughs> yeah. Very good, thank you.